everyone. I'm Clement Pang, uh, co-founder and chief architect of Wavefront, and I'm here to talk about how to get data into Wavefront. Uh, Wavefront is a SaaS service, and it allows you to send time series data into the cloud, and it's managed for you, and you don't have to lift a finger to start using it. Let's say you're an app developer, and you decided to build your favorite app. You decided to pick a known framework to build it off of, and let's say you decided to do it on Java. Uh, like any good web developer, you decided to make sure that it could scale, it could perform, it has the reliability um, uh, requirements that, that any app, modern day app, would need. And you decided to put it in the public cloud. And let's say for this example, you decided to put it on AWS. So you spawn up your, uh, you spin up your AWS EC2 instance, and you're good to go. And you're serving traffic, and people are getting to your application. Very quickly, you realize you actually have a lot of traffic. So what you decided to do is to run more copies of the application in a kind of a sharded environment. Since you're in the cloud, you also decided to use some of the services that AWS itself provides. So for example, like RDS or S3. You also decided to use some of the more well-known off-the-shelf components. And let's say you have a cache layer underneath this, and that is Redis. Now, after doing all of this, you realize you have a problem. You want to really understand what your application is doing. You want to understand where your users are, are having trouble. And if there is downtime, you want to very quickly identify what is the root cause of your issue. And this is where Wavefront steps in. You could actually go to Wavefront today, uh, wavefront.com today, and you could actually get a trial account. And what that allows you to do very quickly, if you're using a well-known cloud provider, is for Wavefront to query data from AWS on your behalf without installing anything and without actually changing any of your code. What Wavefront will do is to immediately populate a set of integration dashboards for well-known EC2 services. So for example, your EC2 instances will show up as a dashboard in the system, as well as if you happen to be using RDS, those data will actually also show up in the dashboard. So what you very quickly is able to achieve is to gain observability into your cloud footprint. And we have dashboards that are cost specific. We have dashboards that are um, uh, component specific to AWS. And now you realize it's not just the cloud environment that you want to monitor. It also includes your application. It also includes uh, packaged applications. And so what you could do is for Redis, for example, and we have integrations for over 200 um, uh, common middleware or packaged applications, is to actually install an agent on the machine. And we happen to choose Telegraph. And after you install the agent there, it would be configured to monitor Redis. And we have step-by-step -step instructions on the website to do that. And you could have Telegraph send data directly into Wavefront via HTTPS. And that is our first way of getting data into Wavefront via direct ingestion. Wavefront has the logic to automatically detect that you are sending data from Redis, and it will automatically also populate dashboards that are Redis specific. And so very quickly, you now have visibility into Redis, as well as your cloud infrastructure, as well as the components that you use in the cloud. But then you realize custom metrics, or metrics that are relevant to your application, is really what you want to know. You want to know how many people are signing on, how many people are having trouble, for example, getting errors. And you want to know perhaps where you should spend your time in optimizing that application. And that's where some of our application SDK comes in. And let's say you decided to choose our Drop Wizard integration, which is a metrics library um, that allows you to send uh, time series data or collect time series data and have a way to send it somewhere else. So you installed the Drop Wizard uh, you, or included the Drop Wizard dependency, and you decided to send the data to Wavefront. And again, you could use the same way of sending data directly via HTTPS. So for custom app integrations, uh, we have a full-fledged authoring environment, which allows you to create your own dashboards, uh, surfacing KPIs, trying to point out you know, using different visualization methods what are pertinent to your application. So you did your own app dashboard. So very quickly, you have a way of uh, understanding how that entire app footprint um, is behaving in the cloud. And let's say you have a bit of a more complex situation. Uh, as apps uh, start to proliferate and you decided to go into microservice environments and whatnot, 
you decided perhaps it's not a good idea just to have uh, data sent directly into Wave from the cloud. You want to control, you know, for example, you, want, you may want to blacklist certain metrics. You don't want to uh, have all the metrics coming in from a particular integration all the time. And this is where the Wavefront proxy comes in. The Wavefront proxy is an open source Java piece of software that also talks to Wavefront via encrypted HTTPS. But it exposes a very easy, almost, you know, you could use it with Telnet method to send data into Wavefront. So all of the integrations that we have, including Telegraph, including Drop Wizard, allows you to send data directly into the proxy. And this is a plain text protocol. So you could really, you know, spin up Telnet and, and start typing. And what this allows you to do is to have a single point where data is collected from your uh, different uh, pieces of your infrastructure and have that data sent to Wavefront via a single channel. Certain environments have restrictions on uh, whether internal applications can actually reach the cloud. And the proxy is a very easy way for you to control uh, data flow so that all the data stays within an internal uh, networking environment. And the proxy is the only piece of software that actually reach uh, the public internet. Um, so I also want to talk about a, a specific integration that we have. And let's say you, your app is performing well, and you decided to try out serverless. And so on AWS, that would be Lambda. And so we have a function as a service integration. It's also shipped as an SDK uh, for popular languages. And so you could actually put a very simple logic very quickly and run that on AWS and have metrics sent directly to Wavefront. And for that particular SDK, you could use the proxy or you could also do direct ingestion. The reason why I highlighted all of the ways that you could get data into Wavefront is the fact that you want to have as much visibility into different components of your infrastructure is possible so that you could actually figure out what is going on in your application. In this particular example, you could diagnose issues with the cloud. You could diagnose issues with a packaged application like Redis. Uh, you could actually figure out issues in your own application with Drop Wizard, for example, Java garbage collection, or you, know, you have requests that are stalling. All of that are metrics that you could feed into Wavefront, as well as if you're doing, uh, you're doing explorations in, in a newer technology such as Fast, and you have all of that integrated in a single pane of glass in Wavefront without lifting a finger, without managing storage, without having to manage the reliability aspects of a modern observability platform. I hope that's uh, enough to pique your interest. Hope to talk to you guys more. Thank you. Mm -hmm.